might be wondering why I'm sat in the door of a plane strapped to someone who can only be described as a madman. Frankly, at this moment, I was asking myself the same thing. I'm Ross, and this week we're exploring the science of skydiving. So how is it possible to jump out of a plane and survive? Gravity is a pretty powerful force, and 15,000 feet is a long way to go before hitting the ground. We've all experienced gravity. What goes up must come down, and it's a product of the object's mass. This apple and the Earth are both being attracted towards one another because of the force of gravity. But since the apple is far less massive than the Earth, the apple appears to fall towards the Earth. The acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. In other words, with each second that passes, I'm going to be traveling 9.8 meters per second faster. But this doesn't mean that I'm going to keep speeding up until I hit the floor with a splat. So here I have a giant fan and a smoke machine. Now, if I take this inflatable shuttle and place it in the stream of air, we can see that it flows over it very easily. So there's not much air resistance there. But if we switch this to something with a bit more surface area, we can now see the air is a lot more turbulent and it's facing greater air resistance. This air resistance is what's going to help me survive the jump. As I fall through the air, it's going to be pushing back on my body in the opposite direction. And the faster I fall, the greater the force of air resistance pushing back. After three seconds, our speed is already at 60 miles per hour, but air resistance is already affecting our acceleration. By eight seconds, we're at 102, and it takes a further seven seconds for us to reach 120 miles per hour. At this point, the force of gravity is equal to the force of air resistance. This means that we've stopped accelerating, and so our speed is constant. This is called our terminal velocity. This belly down position also helps increase air resistance. But even so, hitting the ground at 120 miles per hour is still a very bad idea. The instructor has already released a small parachute which helps create a little extra drag. When we get to roughly three and a half thousand feet, the instructor deploys the main parachute. All of a sudden, the huge surface area massively increases the air resistance and we quickly decelerate. In just a couple of seconds, we go from 120 miles per hour to just five. And I've got to tell you, that's the biggest wedgie you can ever experience. After several minutes of gliding around, we land safely back on Earth. Oh, yeah! <laughs> For more science stunts, why not watch me walking across red hot coals? Stay tuned over the next few weeks as we'll be investigating all things foodie, from beehives to milking cows. So for more science every week, click subscribe. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.